everyone. Today I'm going to teach you how to do this pomegranate picture. Isn't that great? We're going to use charcoal and watercolor. I have my eight by 10 piece of paper. I have taped it on to another piece of paper because this is gonna get messy, as you know. I found the corners of my page under the tape so that I could measure and find the middles over here. All that I did for setup. And now comes a time we have to tell the difference between our willow charcoal and our compressed charcoal. So one of the ways is our compressed charcoal is shaped like a cube, like a square. Um, but the main reason, the main way we can tell is that the willow charcoal will smear easily and the compressed charcoal will stay really dark. So uh, we do not want the really dark one yet. We want to start with our willow charcoal, the one that erases easier first. Now, it doesn't erase perfectly, of course. That's why we're doing this. So you're going to let it land on your paper and you're gonna pinch it and move it around to get your whole paper nice and gray for the grise effect. So everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And do, 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 do. that looks pretty good. And then you can either take your hand or a Kleenex and rub it all the way around. Now I'm gonna move my paper the other direction because I decided I wanted to show my pomegranates like they're wading down the boughs of the branches, pulling them down so that they're at the end and they're heavy. And so I think it'll look better on a portrait style page. So we're just gonna turn it the other direction. All right, I have it turned the other direction and when I stopped the camera, I went and got a tissue so that you can see what it looks like if we go in circles with the tissue. So here we go, in circles. That does look a bit more even, so that was probably worth it. There we go, even, even, even. And yeah, that looks pretty nice. Okay, and then I will draw the plus sign again. Do, 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 do. That way, you know where we are. All right. Pomegranates, um, uh, they are so fun. They are a beautiful color of red. And I would encourage you to Google pomegranates growing on a tree and just get to see them. Look at lots of them. Don't just stop at the first picture Google images shows you. Um, they're very beautiful. And I, I didn't really think about them until I was visiting Arizona and I was at the botanical gardens there and I was like, la, 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 because, you know, there's a lot of cactuses there, la, 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 and Chihuly's glass was there, and I was like, ooh, ah, ah, and then I was just standing still for a minute, and I don't even know why, and then I just looked over, and I was like, what? What is that? That, that's how pomegranates grow, because I had eaten pomegranates. I'd even fed them to chickens before, but I uh, had never seen them grow on a tree before, and it was incredible. And there are all these hummingbirds flying around going yum, 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 pomegranates. It was awesome. Okay, so we have our plus sign. Now we're going to have one of our pomegranates kind of higher up. So here's my line, and I'm going to make sure that the top of the pomegranate is about midway. And so I'm going to put a floating platform. So you can see this is the helping line. It's so a floating platform about midway and in the middle of this part. And then pomegranates are not perfect circles. So I'm going to put a letter C here and a backwards letter C there. And then I'm going to erase this with my finger and this with my finger. And so we have kind of like a slightly wide oval. That will be one of our pomegranates. And then the branch for this pomegranate will be going up maybe not even at that steep of an angle because it's at the end of the boughs. It's pretty heavy. There we go. <laughs> kind of looks like a caramel apple, but you'll be doing this in December, so you won't be thinking about caramel apples. All right, so next I'm going to have this be the top of my pomegranate, 
and this will be the bottom of my pomegranate. And I'm gonna bring my curve, whoop, <laughs> yeah, that happens. I'm gonna bring my curve over here, letter C, backwards letter C, ta-da! All right, and then I have to pick up all these fragments and erase out of there and from under there. And I don't need this one anymore. Uh, but let's keep this one for just a minute longer. All right, so now one, two pomegranates, and we're going to have these two kind of overlap a little bit. So I want to have the bottom of my pomegranate be to there and the top of my pomegranate be there. And we'll go... Hmm... Yep, that doesn't fit so good. All right, I'm moving him stage left. All right, so watch how we move him stage left. We copy this curve. We copy this curve. We erase this curve. We erase this curve. And then we can put the bottom of this on. All right, so the reason why I did that is pomegranates have a unique bottom to them that comes from the flower before it turns into the fruit. And I wanted to see the bottom on all three pomegranates. And so I didn't want this one to go off the page so I could see the bottom. All right. So we just kind of migrated it that way a little bit. And I actually think I would like to see slightly more distance here. So watch how we re-raise this one. So we're going to go copy this one, copy that one, and erase the other stuff. All right. So... Once you have something, don't erase it to move it. Draw the new parts first and then erase it. So neat trick, huh? Now you know something new. And it works really great when you've got something that erases easily, like willow charcoal. See, just kind of follow it, copy it. It's great. And don't worry about the mess caused by this charcoal. We'll take care of that when we get to our... Um, tracing phase. Okay, so we shouldn't be too fastidious about all these little bits. It'll just slow us down. Okay, so that looks like enough information for the fruit. We're only going to have three. It's really good to have an odd number of things, and so that's our odd number. Okay, so this one is going to have a branch going this way. Okay, and this one is going to have a branch coming this way kind of similar to cherries, and then the branch is going to head off in that direction so that these boughs are coming from a tree high up there. Okay, you got that? Okay, so now the bottom of the fruit. So we're going to put like a rainbow there and a rainbow there and a rainbow there. Okay, that's kind of like where the, the bottom part is going to join to the fruit. Or actually, the fruit just keeps swelling, right? It was like small and it gets swells bigger, bigger, bigger. Because it used to be a flower before the bees came and like pollinated. And then this is just growing, growing, growing fruit after the pollination. So very nice, full of berries and seeds. And so that part is going to have kind of a cylinder-like design coming from there and then the flower parts are little triangles so we'll have this one's like a bit more closed even kind of folded and so it looks more interesting a variety of sizes so pretend like there there that looks cool kind of like little crowns but they're going in different directions so this one is kind of unfurled frontwards Frontward, going this way, and then you can see the backside ones. Because remember, it used to be a flower, so it's kind of closing up. And then this one kind of looks like a curtain is parted, like bangs. And then we have a little more, and then you can see kind of the back ones here, too. All right, so something like that. That was cool. And then they would just keep growing. They would keep getting bigger. And this part keeps getting smaller. 
And so when you get a pomegranate at the store, it'll be like this big and that little part is super tiny. And uh, yeah, so that's how that works. Okay, so then their leaves are actually long and just normal leafy leaves, So, but they're plentiful. So we're just gonna follow our way up with leaves. So, but we have to decide who's in front. Hmm. Right, well, we know this guy's in front. So this one could go there. See why? So who's in front? Now, is this guy in front? He might be in front. All right, so we'll put that leaf behind him. Okay. Because remember, when things are in front, you can't see through them. That leaf might be in front. Leaf, leaf, leaf. There's a lot of leaves. Right, this guy's in back. Just fill it up with leaves. You do not have to have the same number of leaves as me. So, as a matter of fact, if you find that your leaves are smaller than mine, you will need more in order to get it to fill up all the way down to there. And. Cool, and I think I even do another one like right there. All right, that is all of the delightful drawing that we're gonna do with our willow charcoal. Yay! So now we get to trace with our compressed charcoal. Remember, it's the one that does not erase easily, which is why we're gonna use it now. Um, so we're gonna trace everything with a single line of authority. Boop, 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 boop. And if you mess up, that's the new one. You know what? I'm going to change this a little bit. If you don't feel comfortable changing it with something permanent, you can switch. But I'm going to lower my curve on here to put these bottom bits a little lower down. Because I see I have plenty of room to have them lower down. And... I like using that space that way. I don't know, that's really confusing. So here, let me go ahead and just wipe that off. Now you can see what I have done. Dun, da, da, da. And I have no regrets. Okay, so that is what I have done. Okay. And tracing everything. Do, 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 do. I won't do any more editing. We're going to keep everything else as I had as I had it before. Well, except I probably won't be able to help myself. Some editing just happens. It's just part of the process of this step. Sometimes I think it even happens on automatic pilot. My willow charcoal this time was a bit browner. And my compressed charcoal has a grayer tint, so I can tell where I've been because of the slight color difference. But you might not be able to tell where you've been every single time, so don't worry if you can't. Oh yeah, I just added more leaves. Okay. Okay, I think I'll even add a leaf kind of poking out from behind here. Oh yeah, that looks good. Okay, all right. I think I trace everything, I am not sure. So first I'm gonna just gently, ever so gently move those particles away. Look, I forgot stuff. All right, but because I gently did it, I didn't rub hard, then I can see the places that I missed. And you were watching on camera probably going, no, Miss Elaine, you forgot that part. And you were right, but it's not too late. All right, so I got that part back, I got this part this part, this part, and there. Okay, yay, looks good now. All right, so, oh, and probably that. Now I can do my gentle wiping again. Even when I'm wiping harder, I'm not gonna wipe with all my might. But this is how I'm gonna get those fragments off. 
Because, like, look, if I press hard and wipe the fragments, they will draw things. So that's why you want to start gently to get the fragments off, because we don't want them drawing things. They might get out of hand. Okay. And then I'm going to find kind of a cleaner spot and just gradually increase my wiping pressure to get it a little lighter. All right. Looks good. If anything had gone away, I would have just... Um, I would have just traced it back again. Because it's hard to see things when everything is gray, I'm gonna create some more contrast by doing my erasing part before I do my dark shading. And so I'm gonna get my eraser stick and I'm first just gonna re-outline inside my lines on all these leaves and kinda of create that highlight part where the sun might hit the edges of things. So the dark places will have the light places next to them. And we'll just do that. These are kind of, they look like glossy leaves, kind of glossy edges. Um, not quite tropical, like a um, magnolia. It's not going to have that kind of gloss, but these have a bit of a shine to them on their edges. So get those in there. And we won't erase them thoroughly because the gray will make for a nice color of green. So that'll be great. Remember, if you made a mistake with your drawing, you can erase even the compressed charcoal. So that's pretty nice. All right, now those leaves show up pretty well. And if you look very, very closely, we can see little eraser shreds right there. So if I wipe them thoroughly, they're just gonna turn gray again. So I recommend you get like a cleaner tissue again, and then just kind of barely brush them off and then leave them be, okay? Because if we just keep wiping them, then it's just gonna turn gray again. And that would be pointless, a waste of our time. All right, good. So next we're gonna take our eraser stick and let's thoroughly erase the flower portions of these. And we'll try to leave those little lines for the colors or the edges there. So we're gonna erase the ones that we can see their shape on the outside like this but we don't have to go in the negative space so very much because it'll be darker in there. So kind of these little crowns, they kind of look like the hats that Bugs Meany wore in the Encyclopedia Brown stories or Jughead. I think people, more people know who Jughead is than Bugs Meany, but they both wear the same little hats. So see, I'm not gonna go up in there. I'm gonna kind of leave that dark. I'll be interested to know if any of you ever wore a Jughead hat um, or a Bugs Meany hat because uh, I have not. I have not worn one of those. Okay, so then again, very gently sweeping that off. Yay. Okay, then I'm going to get my eraser block that we have half of one because we were using the heifer drawing. And this one... I can clean off the top of these guys. So up here, don't need to clean off the bottom because there's a shadow down there and there's not a light color down there. So the top is good enough. So this is where we're being, um, we're, we're drawing with our eraser right now, basically. So we're drawing the top to be the highlighted side of these guys and the bottom is the shadowy side. And so for this one, there's less highlight because it's just getting hit with the sun kind of through this tree up here. Okay. Yay. All right. Now I use my tissue and dry off. Not dry off, but dust off those little bits. While I have this, I'm going to put a few clouds in my sky. Do, 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 do. So it'll be a bit bright. You don't want to go crazy because the blue will look nicer 
than the clouds in this picture, I think. But I want some clouds, so that'll be my approach for that. And we learned last month with our tortoise that our, our nice little student grade cheap watercolor set actually has a nice gouache white that works pretty sweet. So I'll be able to include some white on our clouds at that point too. All right, so those will be our clouds. And now I will dust, 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 dust. Okay, great. Next, I'm gonna use my white one, my, my white one, my eraser stick to try to put a brighter circle of white in the places where the white would shine. So there'd be the reflection on things. So here and here. Now I gotta work really hard to remember that that's the reflection so that I don't paint over that later. That's gonna be tough. Okay, I'll try really hard to remember. All right. And time for a little bit darker shadow. So now I'm gonna get my compressed charcoal again so we're gonna go a little darker. So I put some charcoal down, and I'm gonna rub it with my finger for this shadowy side, shadowy bottom side here. Yep, I'm gonna put a little bit inside of that. And remember, if you get carried away, you can just kind of rub it out or you can erase a little more that seems good though i think probably i'm not worried that you're going to get carried away because most people are afraid of the dark black color and people tend to be more timid than more bold so i'm not real worried about you overdoing this i'm gonna draw that line back in there again between the two And you'll notice that this doesn't even blend as easily as the willow charcoal does. So it's it's got some glue in it. They just call it binder, but um, it holds it right where you put it so it doesn't even blend smoothly as, as smoothly as the willow charcoal that has no glue in it. Putting a little shade on the stem as it's coming up. Like some of our leaves have a little darkness there. Yeah, let's do that to this too. All right, so we have our black and white pomegranates. And we'll go a little bit more shadowy inside. See how I created a little bit more curve there on that one. I just decided I wanted more, more to this pomegranate. See that? Added another division to maybe these little, little flower parts. Now I gotta erase the white out of that one because I erased it. Too much. Oh, you know what? I can put this one in the front row. Yeah. And that could be the back row. Cool. All right. See how that changes it up? Pretty fun, huh? 
We don't want these to be too organized. If they look exactly the same, that'll be very boring. Very boring. And boring is my enemy, so we got to take care of that. There, that looks cool. Okay, let's see what we got over here. A little farther in. I know I said I wasn't gonna erase that out and then I did. I'm gonna have to draw it back. I overdid it, not a problem. Just go back, we'll do this one here. This will be the bent one. Put another one there. All right, that just got confusing. Okay. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. He's all twisted. I'm gonna dust it. Okay. And rub that a bit. All right, I think I'm happy with my choices. Oh, I know, I'll, I will increase this a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now I'll add more shadow here since I have increased that. So I slightly use the side so I wouldn't have lines. I could increase my gray up. No, there we go. All right. One, two, three pomegranates. All right, how's that? I am pleased. I kind of just wish I had more leaves. That's the thing, because they're gonna be fun. All right, so I'm gonna put some more. I know that was part of my cloud. That's all right. After a race, I know. Okay, but I think we're just gonna be really happy if we have more leaves in here. I know, the more leaves we have, the more we have to paint, but. You know, that's part of why I think we'll be happier, because it's going to be fun to paint this one. Okay, so I got more leaves. Then I got to put more eraser edges. Kind of make my other leaves look like my new leaves now. That's okay. It's worth it. Oh, I can fit a leaf there. Okay. So I'm putting some leaves on the back row, basically. They're like, we can't see. And I'm like, it's okay. Nothing to see here, folks. The leaves can just be back there. I really like outlining things, too, so... I gotta say, I'm not sad about the fact that it just got more outliney. Okay, I'm gonna erase a few things. Oh, I'm gonna re-outline that. See how I missed the first time? Doesn't even phase me. I'm just going to erase it. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So erase where I messed up. Let's see, all is well. So now I will extend my cloud down a bit farther this way. Okay. 
Well, I better stop because I could just keep drawing this all day and there's only three pomegranates. Okay, maybe I need a little bit there. I know, I tried to stop. I tried to go here. Oh, I know. It's tough because it's like you just keep seeing things you want to do and that's normal for everyone. So no, that's normal for everyone. Okay, I'm going to stop and then we're going to spray it and then we're going to dust it off again. I have my rave hairspray, yay! And so I'm gonna use this to spray that. I've got, I've got the tree holding it for me. And you're gonna spray quite thoroughly all around, all in the middle. It's quite wet now and I will let it dry flat. My hairspray is all dry because I waited overnight to uh, get ready to paint this. And so now that the hairspray's all dry, I can rub off any eraser schnoodlins that were still kind of stuck there and not be worried that there will get black charcoal on my hands. And then I'm super excited to paint this. So first off, we've got our delightful colors. We've got a nicer paintbrush than came in our set and make sure my brush is nice and wet. We're gonna use this dark yellow right here. It is one, two, three, so white, light yellow, dark yellow. And we're gonna come in and get these little points on our pomegranate. See that? So we're gonna do that on all of those because there's these delightful tips that haven't turned yet because these pomegranates still have a bit of swelling to do before they are ripe and ready to be picked and eaten. This is a good time of year to go. Um, I think our local groceries like to have festive fruits and pomegranates will probably be available for you to take a look at and see how this really shrinks down as the fruit enlarges. So that nice yellow. Oh, also there is an occasional yellow leaf. So we'll put in an occasional yellow leaf. So that'll look fun to have an occasional yellow leaf. So let's see, that's an odd number. That's three. Um, all right, so I have to decide between three and five yellow leaves because those are odd numbers. I don't want to go crazy. I'm going to move on up to five. So I'm going to get maybe this little guy back here. And let's see. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Mm, no, one, two, three, four. All right, I'll do this one over here. There you go. But really, any five leaves would have done just fine. All right, I'm going to skip all the way to the brighter, lighter vermilion or orangey red color down here because I don't want to get so far into painting this that I forget that I'm supposed to be leaving a white spot. So I'm going to leave. That is the white spot to see that. All right, and then I get to paint the whole rest of this, this vermilion color now. Let's see. I'm not going on the white spot and extending down onto that yellow a little bit so it makes a bit of orange. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And you'll notice when I go back for more of this color, I wash my brush. And we're going to do that on all of, let's see, there's a reflection there, all of our pomegranates. That is all three pomegranates painted with the orangey red color. And you see it's, it's kind of pale. You can still see the gray charcoal through it, so that's good. And then this had kind of a round highlight. This one has more of a wide highlight. And then I just left the tiniest one right there. I probably should have had a little bit to the right, but that's going to work out just fine. And I recognize that these are maybe too orange for a pomegranate. But we'll come back to that later because I want to spend some time on our leaves now. And yeah, because we'll get all the main parts in and then we'll go back and do the more nuanced coloring of things. And so let's use this green here, the darker, bluer green, and see what we have. Oh yeah. 
See how very blue that is? Okay, so probably that will not be the end. We're just going to start there. So let's do that on all of our leaves. I've done all my leaves with this number two green color. That's a very blue green. And I didn't listen to myself when I said do all the leaves and I accidentally did the stem here. So I'll show you how to fix it if you accidentally do the stem here. And then I was careful not to do the stem over there. Uh, so I can show you what I'd hoped to do had I not accidentally forgotten and done the stem. Also, I said all the leaves, but I didn't paint over those yellow ones. So that's just a little bit different. And yes, we will do more to our red pomegranates. We'll do more to our green leaves. Next, let's put in some burnt sienna. So that's this one right here on those branches that I on purpose didn't paint green there and I accidentally painted green here. And we'll see which one ends up being better at the end. And you can copy whichever one works. So some burnt sienna on that doesn't look so bad that there was green first. <laughs> now it's time for my inner six-year-old girl because we're going to work on our background a bit. And I'm going to start with this delightful purple color up there. I know that seems strange, but I think it'll be good. And I'm going to put it down here. Delightful purple. Do, 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 do. Probably not where my clouds are. So around my clouds. Dab, dab, dab. I'm making sure that it shows up. I'm going to wash my brush, get a little more water. Do, 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 do. Stirred really good. Purple, purple, purple. A little purple right there. Mm -hmm. All right, and since it's not as purple as I expected, I'm going to go next door to the pink. All right, I know this is definitely my inner six year old girl going with this pink. So I'll put some pink. Oh, yeah. Dot, 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 dot. Now, notice I'm patting with the tip of my brush. Um, never go straight and make a circle by spinning your bristles because it will never come to a point again, and that will be so sad. All right, so we got that there. That looks good enough. Next, we're going to use the blue that's right next to the dark green. And we'll stir that a bit. And we're going to put that in the whole background, even in the places that we put the pink and the purple. And if your pink and purple goes away, don't worry. We can always add it back in there. So this is for everything that's not a pomegranate, not a leaf, and even not a cloud. Or a branch, not a branch. The whole background. We're going to do the whole sky, but not the clouds. Notice that your paper is going to start to curl just a bit. The paper still will be able to handle it um, and it will go back to being flat again later. Uh, you just don't want to be here for a thousand hours because then you'll start to get your paper pilling up. So I think I'm almost done with that spot and I can move on around the corner. Keeping enough water in your paint and it's still being blue when you apply it is how you know you have the right consistency. You can see I'm being careful to go in between every little leaf, every little triangle, a little nook and cranny. Uh, unless, of course, I want there to be a cloud there, so like right there. Um, but if it's paper and it's not green, then I'm going to try to make sure that I get the blue there or at least recognize that I on purpose will be putting white there for a cloud later. So carefully going in between every little leaf and stem. And you can go on 
the black of the charcoal lines as well. All right, that looks pretty good. Next, I'm gonna skip over this blue and come down to the one right next to our friend Prussian Blue, right here. And I'm gonna put a few dapples. Notice I have a little less water and more paintiness and that my paper is still kind of damp from coloring. Put a few dapples of this color in down here. And then I'm gonna take some of that darker green color and put a few dapples of that down here as well because that will be kind of out of focus, more boughs of the tree back in this corner, but it's out of focus. And that will look pretty interesting. More dapple, 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 dapple. Okay. Next, I'm gonna go to this middle color. This blue is way more powerful than you would guess because it's so light. And it's gonna go over here to the left of our pomegranates and with a little dapple effect, kind of outline the cloud. Let's cut that kind of green feel, like wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah, don't know if I need a little bit more. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and play in the white down there because Oh, you know what? Let's put it on our pomegranates first. We can go a little bit bigger than we put the white before. So it kind of creates a pale pink, pale orange around the edge. There we have it. Now I don't have to worry about getting blue out of that later if I get blue on it. And then we can Stir it up nicely for our cloudy areas. Actually, there's some clouds up in here. I think when it dries, it shows up even lighter. And if you get on the leaf like I just did, I think it's gonna be more camouflage, so it won't matter too much. Okay, and I'm gonna stir, 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 stir. Stir, 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 because that will be the brightest white in the places where I stirred. Stir, 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 because it's a higher concentration if I stir and I have less water, so I can do that in the middle areas. Like that. Okay, now we get to come back to our pomegranates, and we get to use this much darker red that's over here between the pink and the burnt sienna brown. And let's start by putting it on the shadow areas. And the shadow areas of our pomegranate first. And that'll look way too organized, I understand, but don't worry, we're, we're gonna take care of that. We just want that there first. And it'll look scary because it'll seem too dark and out of place, but it'll be good. All right, so we have those in the dark places. And I'm going to get my brush wet. I'm going to pick up some of the vermilion. I'm going to pick up some of the red. And now we're going to increase it into these other places. So wet brush, red, vermilion, red, vermilion. We can clean that off later. You can just take a damp cotton ball to clean that off if you need to, or just a corner of your paper towel even. OK, 
So you notice I left it kind of odd next to that sparkle of light there. I'll, I'll fix that later. Okay, now I'm just going to wash my brush entirely, not use paint at all, and come around that highlight. I'm going to dry off my brush now so I can pick up that flood that fell in the middle. There we go. I have to be gentle, so I don't want to create a, a pilling sweater kind of thing on that surface. If you do too much, you can just add some more white in. I don't think you can do too much though, because if you go too far in, then you can just add it back on. It looks cool. Okay, our pomegranates are looking pretty sweet, and now I'm going to try this yellow green color up here on my other leaves. All right, so let's just do one stripe on every leaf. So if it's got dark green down, let's light green up. And I'm even gonna light green a little on my yellows. You can just keep adding the light green until you like your leaves the best. So if you're like, you know what, I'd like to see more light green, then feel free. Feel free. This style paint on this charcoal has a tendency to create little bubbles. And I like that. That kind of looks cool. Kind of makes it look like some sort of printmaking or something when those pop in there. Um, now let's go for this kind of yellow ochre color. And let's use that on the inside spaces. So not the ones that are closest to us, but the inside spaces of the flower section. And I'm even gonna go to this chocolate color and go in there with that too, because I think it gets quite brown as it's drying out. Oops, wrong one. Yeah. Chocolate color for those inside. Yeah. That's nice. All right, and I'm gonna play around with the purple some more because since I put it at the bottom, I want my picture to match. Put a little purple up there, a little purple on my branch. Um, so basically I'm doing with purple what I normally do with Prussian blue, in case you're curious. Um, and maybe in a minute I'll play with Prussian blue. But I kind of like it. Just the purple. We don't even do a little purple down. So, what do you think? It's too much for you, you don't have to do it. All right, bottom of these branches, or edge. Yeah. All right, let's see what Prussian blue looks like on here. We'll test it up here and see if we like it. Mm. You know, it will be really well outlined if you did the Prussian blue, but it might be too much for me. I kind of like the gentleness of this one. Um, so, as I keep painting with it. 
So I'm going to stop on the Prussian blue this time. I know you'll be so proud of me. And I'm just going to add a few more. I'm going to make sure my brush is really clean and going to add a few more tiny dots on these leaves. Because remember, we talked about them having a bit of sheen to them. They're not succulent. They're not waxy, but they do have enough of a sheen that they would have a sparkle. Even maybe on the tips of these in the front. All right, and that is it. We can take off our take off our tape and we can sign it. Yay! You might consider leaving your tape on until your picture is dry, and then remember to keep your tape low and pull it at a right angle here, or a 45 degree angle here, away from your art. And then it won't tear into your image.